Welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes. Today we're going to look at polymers. A polymer is a macromolecule made up of many repeating units called monomers. So a polymer is essentially made up of many repeating units. So it'll look something like this. So you have so each circle represents a monomer. So this is a monomer and they are the repeating units and they are linked via some linkage all right the term polymerization is a process by which monomers link to each other to form a polymer there are two types of polymerization one we have addition polymerization in this case and we have unsaturated monomers linking together to produce a saturated polymer and the second type is a condensation polymerization Monomers link to produce a polymer with the elimination of small molecules and this can be molecules such as H2O or HCl. The first example of an addition polymer we will use is ethene. Now this is the ethene molecule here and what we notice is that we have a carbon to carbon double bond. So therefore, the ethene molecule is unsaturated. However, when ethene undergoes an addition polymerization reaction, we end up with polyethene. Now, what happens is that the double bond changes into a single bond. Notice the difference. And this represents one repeat unit okay so if we had to do two repeat units it'll be So this would represent two repeat units. We have one and two, okay? And the key thing to remember here is that the double bond disappears and it becomes a single bond. Now, examples or the uses of polyethene, we use them in plastic bags, toys, buckets. The second example we are going to look at is PVC. In this case, the monomer is vinyl chloride, right, which is represented by this molecule here. Now, this molecule can undergo an addition polymerization reaction, in which case it becomes the double bond disappears and it becomes a single bond but you still have the same atoms present. So you have one, two H's at the top. So you have one, two. And on this side you have the H and we have the HCl. So we see the H and the HCl again. So when vinyl chloride undergoes an addition polymerization, it forms polyvinyl chloride, or what most people know as PVC. And PVC is used to make pipe fittings The third example we're going to look at is polystyrene. Now, this is the monomer, right? And this here, this X, what this really is, it is a benzene ring. But at the CSEC level, you don't need to know about the benzene ring. So that's why we represent it with an X. 
So the key thing to note here is that again, the double bond disappears and becomes a single bond, right? So my final note here is that in all the examples of addition polymers, the double bond changes into a single bond when the polymer is formed. The next type of polymerization is condensation polymerization. As I indicated earlier, in this type of polarization, polymerization, small molecules are eliminated. And when we say small molecules, we mean molecules like H2O and HCl. So the first example we're going to look at is polyamides. An example of a polyamide is nylon. And we use nylon to make ropes and clothing. And nylon is a synthetic material. Nylon is made by reacting a diacid with a diamine. When we say diacid, we mean that it has two acid groups present. And when we say diamine, it has two amine groups present. So if we look at how nylon is formed, we start off with a diacid. It has two acid groups. This is one, and this is two. And we said it combines with a diamine. And the diamine has two amine groups. The amine group is the NH2 group. So we have one, and we have two. Now, what happens is that the OH from the acid and the H from the amine is eliminated to give us this molecule here. Water is eliminated. And what happens is that we get the amide bond or the amide linkage being produced. So this here is the amide linkage. Okay. So you have to be able to show how the diacid and the diamine reacts to give us nylon. Note that sometimes you may see the amide linkage being drawn like this. Okay, so this is the same as this. Okay. Other examples of polyamides are proteins. A protein is made when amino acids join together to form a polymer. An amino acid has an acid group present as well as an amine group present in the same molecule. So for example, we have two amino acids here. Amino acid 1 and amino acid 2. And in one amino acid molecule, we have an amine group present. We also have the acid group present. In the second amino acid, again, we have the amine group present and we have the acid group present. The OH from the acid and the H from the amine comes out again to give us a water molecule. So we form the amide bond again, or the amide linkage. And this represents a protein or part of a protein molecule. The second type of condensation polymerization we're going to look at is polyesters. An example of a polyester is terylene. And we need to know that terylene is a synthetic material and is used in making clothing. Now terylene is made by reacting a diacid with a diol. As I said earlier, diacid contains two acid groups. A diol contains two hydroxyl groups. So we have a diacid and we have a diol. Diacid has two acid groups, one 
2. And a diol has two OH groups. So we have 1 and we have 2. The OH from the acid and the H from the diol forms water. So in this case, water is eliminated. But the type of bond we get this time is the ester linkage. So this here represents the ester linkage. And this represents the structure of terylene. Another example of a condensation polymer is a polysaccharide. An example of a polysaccharide is starch. And starch is found in living plants. Glucose is a product of photosynthesis. The glucose that is produced is then converted into starch. So basically what happens is that you have glucose is converted into starch and what happens here is that we have several glucose molecules combining to produce starch so let's say we use this to represent a glucose molecule it has two OH groups present and what happens is that one of the OH and one of the H will combine to produce water. Now there are differences between a monomer and its corresponding polymer. For example, let's consider ethene. We know that when ethene polymerizes, it forms polyethene. Now ethene is a gas, whereas polyethene is a solid. When ethene reacts with a bromine solution, bromine is decolorized. It goes from brown to colorless. However, with the polymer, which is polyethene, we get no reaction. And the reason for this has to do with the fact that in ethene, we have the double bond present. So therefore, the bromine can add across the double bond. Whereas in the polymer, the polymer is saturated. So the bromine cannot react to the polymer. Another example is glucose and starch. Glucose is the monomer in this case and starch is the polymer. Glucose is soluble in water but starch is insoluble in water. Glucose reacts with a reducing agent like failing solution to produce a brick red precipitate. You do not get this reaction with starch. In the case of the reaction with iodine, glucose has no reaction with iodine, however, starch will turn the solution blue-black. A protein can be hydrolyzed to produce its corresponding amino acids. And basically, the protein can be hydrolyzed by boiling in a dilute acid. So, Let's say you have a protein. You boil and dilute acid. And what you get is the corresponding amino acids being produced. Now remember any protein we have the amide linkage present. And what happens is that this bond breaks and what you get
So essentially you have the reverse reaction taking place. You get back your acid and you get back the amine group. 